Hello my big and beautiful family, welcome to my channel. Big fam, before we start, of course I would like you to ask you guys to keep praying for the brothers and sisters from Palestine uh, because we know all the atrocities and the genocide that is happening over there. The world already woke up, but we know uh, the powerful ones, they don't want to do anything. The cowards, the traitors, you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, but don't worry about them because on the judgment day, Allah will take care of them. That's for sure. They're going to have a terrific surprise, let's say like that. So don't be quiet, don't stop to spread the truth, to tell the truth, because uh, the situation is very, very, very sad. Since the first day, we know, but the suffering, you know, the kids, the people, they are starving, and it's really sad to see nobody do anything um, to help them. Anyways, this life is a test and everything happens for a reason. Allah knows best. So, today we're going to see uh, Iran retaliates Israel airstrike on Syria consulate. Another sad episode, but we know that nothing gonna happen. It is what it is. We have to be, you know, honest. We just killed over there like seven people from another part of the world, the embassy, from the embassy and all this. And we saw on the television, you know, United States, England, Spain, France. They all want an explanation for that, clear and honest. And of course, Shaitan Yahu going to come with an uh, uh, excuse and... Nothing gonna happen, you know, they are just like dog that bark and never bite. It is what it is, unfortunately. So, let's see what's happening over here, because uh, Iran, uh, they say they're gonna revenge them. And they will, I guess. Let's see what's happening. Iran and Syria have joined forces to retaliate against Israel in the wake of a deadly attack in Damascus that claimed the lives of over 40 individuals. Fortune. The Syrian response targeted the Golan Heights, a region internationally recognized as Syrian territory but occupied by Israel since the Arab-Israeli war. Despite Syria's historical claims to the area, its efforts to reclaim it have been hindered by internal strife, exacerbated by alleged instigations by Mossad. This collaborative retaliation marks a significant escalation, reminiscent of the 2006 incident when Iranian allies in Lebanon attacked an Israeli ship, altering the course of the conflict. The recent response follows a warning issued by Iran in response to the deaths of seven of its military commanders in Syria. Iranian ambassador to Syria, Hossein Akbari, condemned Israel's attack on the Iranian consulate, attributing it to F-35 fighter jets allegedly launched from the occupied Golan Heights. Akbari emphasized the breach of international law and vowed a robust Iranian response. Among the casualties of the Israeli strike were prominent figures within the IRGC, including Briggen Mohammad Reza Zahedi, a close associate of Qasem Soleimani, the late commander-in-chief of the Quds Force. Zahedi's role as a liaison to Lebanon's resistance. That's crazy. Since movement underscores Iran's strategic interests in the region. Since his appointment by Soleimani in 1998, Zahidi played a pivotal role in providing technical and military support to Lebanese resistance groups. The Quds Force, a specialized unit within the IRGC, operates beyond Iran's borders, engaging in unconventional warfare and intelligence activities to support allied groups. Established in the aftermath of the Islamic Revolution, the IRGC aims to safeguard Iran's Islamic regime and extend its influence regionally. 
Zahedi, a prominent IRGC commander, led allied groups primarily in Lebanon and Syria. His demise in the recent occupation strike marks the first instance of a senior Iranian government official losing his life on Syrian soil. Zahedi held key roles as the chief Quds force official in Syria and Lebanon from the late 2000s to the late 2010s. He maintained close ties with the Syrian government and enjoyed a personal relationship with Bashar al-Assad, the Syrian president, aiding in quelling protests incited by Mossad-inspired dissidents. Zahedi was among the first IRGC commanders dispatched to Syria to counter CIA-backed anti-Assad activities. Iran swiftly responded through its Iraqi resistance allies, as reported by the open-minded thinker show news team. Drones dispatched by the resistance targeted various locations in occupied Palestine, inflicting significant damage. Notably, a major factory at Haifa Bay and an Israeli warship were among the targets. These retaliatory actions, executed by the Iraqi resistance aligned with the Iranian Republic, bolster the broader resistance against occupiers in historic Palestine. A pivotal moment occurred when a long-range one-way attack drone, launched from Iraq, nearly struck one of Israel's prized Sayar Six-class corvettes, the country's most advanced warship. Docked in Eilat on the Gulf of Aqaba, the vessel narrowly avoided direct impact but suffered collateral damage as the drone struck a nearby warehouse. Imagery captured post-attack reveals the extent of the damage inflicted on the pier-side structure, with another Israeli naval vessel, the Sa'ar 4.5, docked across from it. Video footage captured during the attack highlights the intended target, the Sa'ar 6-class corvette, underscoring the gravity of the attempted strike. A successful hit on Israel's most advanced warship would have constituted a significant victory for Iran, reminiscent of the 2006 operation by the Lebanese resistance, which culminated in a stalemate and the defeat of occupying forces in Lebanon and Palestine. <laughs> The Zionists, they don't care about anyone. Shaitan Yahu don't even care about his own um, people, his own nation. And he don't respect anyone. Uh, you know, they hide behind the United States. We saw the TV, United States going to give billions of dollars again for them, you know, for weapons and everything else. Uh, but I think they don't want to mess with Iran because if Iran bomb Israel if, uh, with a, a nuclear weapon, Israel will disappear from the map. And of course that will affect, uh, I think, Palestine, Egypt and everything else. So it's... It's complicated. The situation is complicated, and but we know the Shaitan Yahu don't respect and don't care about anyone. Recalling the 2006 Lebanon war, the INS Hanit. 503, an Israeli naval vessel sustained damage while patrolling Lebanese waters off the coast of Beirut. Struck by a missile, likely a Chinese-designed C-802, fired by Hezbollah, the vessel suffered a fire on its flight deck and damage to its propulsion systems. Despite the attack, the INS Hanit remained afloat and navigated back to Ashdod port for repairs under its own power. Tragically, four crew members lost their lives during the incident. Staff Sergeant Tal Amgar, Corporal Shayatas, Sergeant Yaniv Hershkovitz, and First Sergeant Dov Steinschuss. The resurgence of Iranian allies poses a looming threat to various targets in Tel Aviv, as evidenced by a recent report detailing a massive drone strike on the Tel Nof airbase in occupied Palestine. Despite the airbase being equipped with advanced anti-missile defenses, the operation inflicted significant damage on infrastructure, showcasing the evolving capabilities of Iran-backed forces. This successful strike, 
coupled with previous attacks on strategic targets such as warships, amplifies concerns and marks a significant victory for the global resistance movement. To grasp the gravity of the drone attack and its potential psychological impact on the occupying European power, it's crucial to understand the formidable capabilities of the Saar Six-Class Corvette. These vessels, commissioned by the Israeli Navy in May 2015, boast impressive specifications. With a displacement of nearly 1,900 tons at full load and a length of 90 meters, 295 feet, they are formidable naval assets. Armed with an array of weaponry, including an Otto Malara 76 Minter main gun, two Typhoon weapon stations, and a suite of advanced missile systems such as the Barak-8 surface-to-air missiles and Gabriel-5 anti-ship missiles, the Sa'ar 6-class Corvette is a force to be reckoned with. Additionally, its Il M2248 MF Star ASA radar and torpedo launchers further enhance its combat capabilities. The vessel is also capable of accommodating a medium-class SH-60 type helicopter, adding versatility to its operations. Israel received its first Sa'ar 6-class corvette, INS Magan, in December 2020, with subsequent deliveries of INS Oz, INS Atzmaut, and INS Nitzakon. These vessels were equipped with radar and weapon systems by the Israeli Navy upon their arrival. Notably, the integration of the Iron Dome system, comprising launchers firing agile Tamir interceptors and advanced air defense radars, further bolsters the Corvette's defensive capabilities. While primarily designed to intercept short-range rockets and artillery shells, the Iron Dome system can effectively counter threats posed by drones, lower-flying aircraft and cruise missiles, showcasing Israel's commitment to maintaining its security amidst evolving threats. Crucial to its ability to defeat trickier targets is a highly advanced proximity fuse system, able to de If you stop to think about it, you see every, all of this because uh, power. They all want to be powerful. They spend billions and billions of dollars for war, for kill the other each other that's you know we're supposed to you know live in peace peacefully lovely all these billions trillions of money could be spent to help people you know uh, starving people poor people make the world a better place for every single one for our kids it's but no because they want to be powerful they spend on wars and weapons and everything else i don't know it wasn't supposed to be like that you know we should live in peace but the evil got all these um, motherfucker people. Sorry about my words, but it is what it is. Detect a small and fast flying target and detonate the missile's high explosive blast fragmentation warhead with perfect timing in order to destroy it. This implies that its inability to detect and destroy the drones launched by the resistance is a limitation that poses great dangers. Destroy, destroy all distractions. That's what Shaitan loves. You know, wars, destructions, people dying. Yeah, he stayed over there in his chair just laughing and laughing about those stupid people that, you know, wants to kill each other. And he just loved that. Oh, he loved it, trust me to the offensive capabilities of the occupation naval forces. Following this limited retaliation, the Iranian Republican government has issued a statement this morning strongly condemning the Israeli regime's fresh act of aggression. Terming the Israeli missile attack on Iran's consulate as a terrorist crime and a gross violation of international regulations, 
President Ebrahim Raisi expressed condolences to the leader of the Islamic Revolution, the Iranian nation, IRGC staff, and the families of the IRGC martyrs. After repeated defeats and failures against the resistance front, the Zionist regime is struggling to save itself by committing such crimes. But it should know that it will never achieve its sinister goals with such inhumane actions, Raisi stressed. Many Arab nations have also condemned the attack, both yeah, Saudi yeah, Arabia yeah, and the United States. Yeah, they all condemn the attacks, but they don't do anything because they are cowards and traitors. That's all, except Yemen. United Arab Emirates, UAE, have stepped forward to condemn the attack, labeling it as a violation of international diplomatic norms. The Saudi Arabian Ministry of Foreign Affairs issued a stern statement today, unequivocally denouncing the assault on Iran's diplomatic mission in the Syrian capital. The statement emphasized Riyadh's steadfast stance. I don't trust that guy from Saudi Arabia. No. <laughs> he loves money, that's all. He don't care about, you know, the brothers and sisters. ...against any form of aggression toward diplomatic facilities, asserting that such actions contravene international diplomatic laws and the fundamental ah, principles ah, of diplomatic immunity. Saudi Arabia categorically rejects targeting diplomatic facilities for any justification and under any pretext, declared the ministry's statement, reflecting the kingdom's unwavering commitment to upholding the sanctity of diplomatic missions worldwide. The United Arab Emirates echoed similar sentiments, joining Saudi Arabia in condemning what they termed a terrorist Israeli attack on the Iranian consulate building in Damascus. In a separate statement issued in solidarity with Saudi Arabia's stance, the UAE emphasized the need for respecting the inviolability of diplomatic premises regardless of political tensions or disputes. The condemnation from these Gulf nations underscores the regional concern over the escalation of violence and instability in the already volatile Middle East. The Israeli airstrike has further exacerbated tensions between regional powers, particularly Iran and Israel, amidst ongoing geopolitical rivalries and conflicts. The attack on Iran's consulate in Damascus comes at a sensitive time when diplomatic efforts are underway to de-escalate tensions and revive dialogue between regional adversaries. It highlights the challenges faced by diplomatic missions operating in conflict zones and raises questions about the adequacy of measures to safeguard diplomatic premises in such volatile environments. As the international community closely monitors developments in the region, Calls for restraint and adherence to diplomatic protocols have intensified. The incident underscores the urgent need for dialogue and diplomatic engagement to address underlying grievances and prevent further escalation of hostilities in the Middle East. Thank you for joining us today. To further our reach and amplify our message, we encourage you to like, share and subscribe to our channel. Together, let's raise awareness and strive for peace. Well, that was it. Uh, I really hope that Iran do something um, against Shaitanyahu because someone got to stop him. The other countries, I don't think they will do anything because they are all cowards. They all condemn uh, the attack. But like I say, Shaitanyahu going to come out with uh, another excuse uh, line and nothing going to happen. Uh, anyways... Uh, I'm pretty sure that on the judgment day, Allah will take care of all of them. That's for sure. Big family, thanks so much. Love you all. Allah bless you all. God bless you all. And see you guys next time. Let's keep praying for the Palestine. And Palestine has to be free. Thank you.